Hey, what is up gamers? FCAS and Chill here. Before I get into the video, I have a couple pieces of information to share. One, I'm getting a new microphone. I have a Blue Yeti coming in two days, so my voice quality should improve a bit, so that's good to have. Two, I'm working on a very in-depth sepulcher guide that's going to go into details with all the mechanics and strategies. So if that's something that you're looking forward to, please drop the channel a subscription. I'll try to get it out by the end of this week. All right, let's get into the video with Zami. So this video is going to be pretty similar to the uh, solo Bandos one that I released uh, a few days ago. It's just going to be a similar door alter Bofa method to solo Zami. So let's go ahead and start talking about the gear and inventory setup that we'll need. All right, here's my gear and inventory set setup for the solo Zami method. Again, you're going to need the Bofa and the crystal armor because you need a 4 tick ranged weapon and the Bofa has really high accuracy so it's great to have. Uh, one comment here, I, I do have a crystal helm on. In this picture I, I know that typically you'll be doing this on a slayer task and use a slayer helmet. That'll make the fight quite a bit easier. Since I didn't feel like waiting for a slayer task to make this video, I just went ahead and did it in crystal. But if you're on task for greater demons, definitely swap that out for a slayer helm. So you will need a Zami item to get protection from the Zamorak followers within God Wars dungeon. I have the bracers on here. Another good choice would be the blessing if you want to use that. You could also even bring a Zami cape or top and just drop it once you get the kill count. Uh, and then you can enter the Zami room. Now let's talk about the inventory setup. So for the inventory, I have some ranging potions. I brought divine ones, but you can actually bring regular ranging potions too if you're struggling staying alive because the divine ones will deal damage to you. You will need an antidote here or some type of anti-poison because if you mess up and the boss hits you, then you will take uh, poison damage likely and you want to make sure that you don't stay poisoned. Bones to Peaches does not work for the Zamorak method since the minions drop ashes, so unlike Bandos, that's not an option here. I recommend bringing a couple brews. The more brews you should bring if you're less experienced, just to you know both increase your defense and have some way of healing. Also, I bring one prayer potion in addition to all the super restores because right when you enter the Zamorak area in God Wars dungeon, your prayer gets totally drained. So I use this prayer potion to just sit back up. And then again, you want to bring a bit of food, more if you're less experienced, some home telly tabs, and then some runes to cast blood barrage, and make sure you're on the ancient magics spellbook. I also bring a few switches for increasing my accuracy for casting blood barrage. The I like the occult necklace and the tormented bracelet a lot, the wand to auto cast, and then the top for just a little more accuracy. Alright, so now let's go ahead and get into the fight. Alright, this fight is actually very similar to the Bandos solo fight with this method. By the way, if you haven't checked out my Bandos guide, look in the description below. So for this fight, there's a couple small differences. Once the boss spawns, we have to wait one tick before attacking him and moving to get into the cycle. So what I do is I hover my mouse over the activate quick prayers button up here. Right when I see Krill spawn, I will click the bubble to activate my prayers, and then when I see the overhead pop up above my character, that's when I'll click the boss. So I'll do that, click the boss, then click the altar to run through. Run for three ticks, so that means when my true tile marker moves three times, that will be three ticks, then I attack him again, run for three ticks, and so on until I get to the end of the room, then attack him, click on the door to run through him, and then do the same thing, run for three ticks, attack, and so on. So let's go ahead and see that in action. Alright, so I click my prayer bubble right here when he spawns, click on him, then click the altar, run for three ticks, attack, one, two, three, attack, run, one, two, three, attack, click the door, one, two, three, attack, one, two, three, attack, one, two, three, attack, click the altar, run under for three ticks, attack, move for three, attack, and so on. So you can see it's very similar to the Bandos method once you get it set up and he actually died very quickly there. One more thing to mention here, if you watched during that fight, you could see that I actually ran um, toward the end of the room. I started walking for three ticks instead of running to the edges on both sides. So there's actually a setting within rune light that I'm showing right here, 
where you can c hold control when you click and that will walk instead of run and I recommend that setting and it just saves on run energy and actually makes the counting to three ticks a little bit easier because you can just attack him right when your true tile gets to the end of the room there. So I'd recommend turning the setting on and let's see that one more time in action. Now I'm going to show you how to do the first kill right when you enter the room because the setup's a little bit different. So you can see I'm sitting out here, I drink my divine ranging potion, I'm going to turn my prayer on and enter the room. First I spam click this tile and right when I get to it I attack him, then immediately move down here, attack when I get to that tile, move to this one, attack when I get there, then move up here, attack, then move back up here to this one, attack, and then click the door, and then start counting the three ticks again, and I'm back in the cycle. So you can see, one, two, three, attack, click on the altar, one, two, three, attack, one, two, three, attack, and so on. And so we can just watch me um, get the rest of the kill here. Next thing I'm going to talk about is going to be prayer flicking and going into the details on how to do that and block the most damage while killing the minions. So the first thing that you need to know is the ranged minion does the most damage so make sure you're blocking his attacks whenever possible. The goal is to DPS down the mage minion as quickly as possible while blocking all the damage from the range and the melee minions. So we'll see that after this boss finally dies. This is taking quite a while. If I had a slayer task it probably would have gone a bit more smoothly but uh, he should die any second now and then we can get into the prayer flicking. Alright there we go. So you can see here I'm actually focusing down the mage minion and I'm flicking between the range and the melee. So I have my range prayer on right until I see the rangers attack animation start and then I switch to protect from melee to block the meleeer's damage. Remember, you have to have your prayer on before the enemy starts their attack animation to block the damage. So then here I have range on, he starts his attack animation, and switch to melee. And I'm actually turning my range off before turning my melee on here, and that's because I've realized that there's two ticks between their attacks. So I can turn my range on for one tick, off for one tick, melee on for one tick, off one tick, and so on. Also, they attack on a five tick cycle, so if you're comfortable with counting ticks, you can count to five while you're doing this. Uh, let's demonstrate that again and I'll do the counting so we can see what I'm talking about. Alright, so right as he dies, I go and start attacking the mage minion. I notice both the range and the melee are attacking me at the same time, so that's why I run down like that. And then now I'm keeping my protect from range on. Right when I see him start his attack animation, I switch to protect from melee, and, so, and then go back to range right after I see the meleeer's attack animation. And then I just group them up and barrage them. You can see here I'm turning off my prayer, but you don't have to do that. You could just leave on your protect from range until you see the ranger's attack animation, and then immediately switch to protect from melee until you see the meleeer's attack animation, and then switch back from, to range. But I'm actually um, counting here and doing a five tick cycle. And so let me show this part again and, and go through the counting so you can uh, hear my counts as it goes. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, wait a tick. Range on, range off, melee on, melee off, wait a tick. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm turning my range on on one and two one on and off, my melee on on three and four, and then waiting a fifth tick before going back to range because they attack in a five tick cycle. And that's blocking all damage. Again, you don't have to do this, but it does save a bit of prayer. All right, let's see one more example. Also, I'm gonna use this time to shout out my prayer flicking video. If you wanna learn some of these methods like the alternating flick and the lazy flick method, I definitely recommend it. You can see it in the description below. Alright, so remember, turn on Rigor and immediately kill the uh, maging minion. You can see here I have range prayer on, he starts his animation, switch to melee, then switch back. So to melee, then when the melee are attacked, switch back to range. So I'm doing that, now the major's dead, so I'm going to walk over here to clump them up. And then, they're not quite, okay, there we go, now they're clumped up. So now I keep my range prayer on until his attack animation, then switch to melee. And then after that attack animation, switch back to range. So that's all I'm doing, just keep my range prayer on when I see the ranger's attack animation, switch back to melee, see the meleeer's attack animation, switch back to range. 
again, I've identified their attacks are two ticks apart. So on one and two, I'm turning the melee prayer on and off, then three and four, the range prayer on and off, waiting a fifth tick, and then going back to that cycle. So um, yeah, that's all I'm doing here, and then it's pretty easy to heal up. Also, once you get back up to 99 health, you can put on your bow and then just use it to shoot them down quickly with rigor. All right, that's about it for prayer flicking. I hope that's really helpful. Uh, now let's get into some of the troubleshooting and how to get back in the cycle if you get out for any reason. All right, first I'm gonna talk about what happens if your health gets low and you need to eat during the fight. So what you'll do is during your normal move three ticks and attack cycle, you can just eat instead of attacking after moving three ticks. Note that you cannot do this when you're on the ends of the room because you have to attack him right before you run through him with either the altar or the door to flinch him. So I would run through here, move one, two, three, eat, then move one, two, three, eat, move one, two, three, attack, and then I'd still be in the cycle. So it's that simple. Uh, hopefully you won't have to eat during the fight if you can kill him fast enough, especially if you're on a slayer task, but that is how you would do it. Next I'm going to talk about what to do if you get out of the cycle for any reason. So what you'll do is you'll run one tick in front of the end of the room, as you can see here, and then you'll put on your protect from melee. As soon as he starts attacking you, that's when you'll click through on the door or altar to run through him. After you run through him, attack, then move one, two, three, attack, one, two, three, attack, click the other thing, run under him, and so on. And then you're back in cycle. It's easy enough. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed the video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. It'll really help grow the channel. Also, if you have any other guides you want to see, please leave a comment below. Take care and good luck on the grinds.